тапочки мой. Не умирай, пожалуйста. Я тебя прошу. Не умирай. Больно? Не, не дергайся. Не дергайся. Прорываемся, не дергайся. Пожалуйста. Пожалуйста. Пап, ты живый? Я везде прорываемся. Я тебя не кину. Вырываемся. Вырываемся. Не, не дергайся, пап. Не дергайся. Что? Да ну, пап, ну я не смогу этого сделать. Там две овчарки, вторая сзади. Боже, бедняга. Там Котос вот так лежит. И с хозяином до последнего. Да. Назад мы не сдамо. This spine-chilling video surfaced on the internet in early March. Yet Moscow insists that Russian troops are not targeting civilians in Ukraine. On the 6th of March, another video went viral. This dramatic video captures the moment Russian mortar shells were fired near a bridge used by people to flee the fighting in Irpin, a town near the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv. Мы с Арпеня в Арпене стреляли прямо в дома, в людей. Погибли женщина с ребенком 13 лет. Все дома обстреляны. Все... Нам мало людей осталось. Очень тяжело и страшно. Это война, это фашизм, это геноцид всей Украины. Слава Украине! like a disaster the city is almost ruined and the district where i'm living it's like no houses which were not bombed yesterday there was the the hardest bombing and like you know the lights and the sound is so scary and the whole building is shaking and i and my children we were sitting like half of night in the doorway because it's like the safest place and I decided that it's enough. И постоянно слышны взрывы, некоторые очень сильные, прям рядом. Попадали в соседние дома. Вот. Мы видели огонь, взрывы. Рядом с нашим домом стоят машины, в ней убитые люди. Вот. Ну, страшно очень. Верили, что все будет хорошо. А чем не важно стрелки зараз? Ну, нам было вроде бы выступление мэра города, сказали, что это последний шанс выйти. А вот, и часть города 
Мы им почему-то сказали, что будет бой сильный. Сказали, будет сильный бой, лучше уйти. Они в машине, нас там дальше! Стоял, переводив людей, даже шоколад был, дитина шла на зустріч, хотел дать шоколадку. И там семья была, четыре человека. Выжила только мама. Дитина років 13-15. что я их оставила там на смерть мужу, говорю, возвращайся за родителями. Возвращайся, забери этих родителей, потому что я не смогу жить. О, есть. Есть тетя Пупа. Есть тетя Пупа. At the time of recording the show, as per the United Nations, more than 540 civilians have been killed in Ukraine since Russia's invasion began last month. Over two million Ukrainians have fled the devastated country in just two weeks. Many are staying back to fight for their country. But things are changing rapidly in the country, especially near Kyiv. Renka, a village with about 5,000 residents, located 20 kilometers north of Kyiv, also suffered heavy damage. Окупанты, агрессоры, фашисты, просто фашисты обстреливают мирные города. 
мирных людей. Люди потеряли покой. Сколько мы потеряли людей уже. Они не могут без Украины, вы понимаете, они побыли 30 лет и, наверное, поняли, что без Украины они ничто, понимаете, вот поэтому они мстят, что Украина не хочет добровольно в союз, не хочет. Мы уже 30 лет у нас независимости и мы все хотим отдельно жить. Vitaly Klitschko, the mayor of Kyiv, told the media that fierce battles were continuing in and around the capital since the 7th of March. Butcha, Ostomel, Vorzel and Irpin, areas away from the humanitarian corridors, have been suffering the most. Irpin has been cut off from electricity, water and heating. The Russian army has been inching closer to Kyiv since it invaded Ukraine on the 24th of February. And now they have encircled the city. The harshest battles are taking place around it. Ukrainian forces have managed to hold up the advance of Russian troops with resistance that has won plaudits from its western allies. What are you fighting for? Right. What's I'm fucking in your fighting up? for democracy. Where'd he because go? democracy is precious and one man shouldn't decide that another country shouldn't have it. These men are part of the Ukrainian International Legion, a fighting unit comprising of foreign volunteers. It was formed in response to a call by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. More than 20,000 people from 52 countries have volunteered to fight in the new International Legion to help resist Russian attacks. This is Ukraine's second biggest city, Kharkiv. Even here, Russian missile attacks targeted residential areas, a hospital and a university. I'm right now in the district where the uh, tank school and the cadet corp was situated. Uh, Russia dropped here bombs and you can see that the whole area is totally destroyed. Houses are without windows. You can see what happened to the cadet corps. The, and apparently there is no heating, uh, no electricity, nothing in the nearby houses because of this bombardment. Uh, and I don't know when people will be able to return here and to rebuild their houses, when Putin will stop this war or when we will make him stop this. Скорее всего, это Су-25. Они уже три дня летают над Харьковом и уничтожают инфраструктуры не военные, не тактические. Despite the danger, many local businesses, restaurants and bakeries in Kharkiv are working around the clock to provide hot food as well as essential food products to defenders of their homeland. 
Buildings damaged by shelling, rescue workers carrying people out of the rubble. Conditions are also worsening in the northeastern Ukrainian city of Sumy. According to Ukrainian authorities, at least 21 civilians, including two children, were killed in a Russian airstrike on a residential street in Sumy on the 7th of March. The following day, the region was bombed three times. The route out of Sumy was one of five promised by the Russians to offer civilians a way to escape the Russian onslaught. Among those who used this humanitarian corridor were 700 Indian students who were unable to evacuate due to the heavy fighting in the area. Despite these challenges, on the 8th of March, the Indian government announced that the students were being taken to Poltava, some 175 kilometers south of Sumy. From where they will board trains to western Ukraine. Around the same time, an Indian student, Harjot Singh, who was shot four times in Kyiv while trying to flee the war-torn country, managed to return to India. Previously, an Indian student, Naveen Shekarappa Gyanagudar, was killed during heavy shelling in Kharkiv. So far, over 23,000 Indians have returned from Ukraine. There is one Indian who has refused to leave the battle zone, and his reason for doing this may surprise you. Meet Giri Kumar Patil, an Indian doctor who is trapped in Severodonetsk, a town in the Donbas region. Patil says he will not leave Ukraine without his pets, a jaguar and a black panther. This medic, along with his beloved big cats, is holed up in his basement to avoid the bombs. Uh, 
Thousands of refugees fleeing the outbreak of war in their country are bringing their beloved four-legged friends with them. Countries like Romania, Poland and Hungary have relaxed restrictions on the cross-border movement of animals. Animal welfare organizations and volunteers are helping them out. <laughs> Civilian evacuation efforts from besieged cities have been hampered by continued fighting. On the 7th of March, Moscow announced new humanitarian corridors for civilians to flee from Ukraine to neighboring Russia and Belarus. A proposal that Kyiv initially labeled as unacceptable. Arguments over routes have made it difficult to establish humanitarian corridors. Ukraine's government has also accused Russia of shelling a humanitarian corridor it had promised in Mariupol. It claims Moscow carried out an airstrike on a children's hospital in the southern city, wounding 17 people, including women in labor. Ukraine's president Volodymyr Zelensky took to Twitter and called the incident an atrocity. Russia has denied targeting civilians in what it calls a special operation in Ukraine. Schools demolished, shuttered shops, streets that have become battlegrounds, millions fleeing in desperation. The images emerging from Russia's invasion of Ukraine are haunting. Like other conflicts, the human cost of the war in Ukraine is heartbreaking. осколочное ранение височную часть через щеку вышла не вышла а застряла в шейных позвонках вчера 8 лет 